In the Name of Odin, a review. During the first play of this game, we made a couple of mistakes. We corrected them in later runs. Hey everyone, it's Scott Monker. No hat tonight. It's hot outside, so I took my hat off and left it in the car accidentally. Um, so tonight I had the opportunity to play In the Name of Odin. Um, it's a game that just got done with Kickstarters. It's a Nikon Games. Um, a really good game. Um, I happen to love it a lot. I'm, for our first run through, I really liked it a lot. Um, I want to go ahead and give you a review of it and tell you a little bit about it and tell you what I thought of it. Um, first of all, um, the game is a um, a Viking game. It's a kind of a hand management, resource management game, where we all play leaders of a Viking village, all di different Viking villages, where we're um, going on raids, we're building our villages, we're recruiting Vikings, we're getting heroes, all that kind of stuff. And the nice thing about it is, is that um, it's not a co-op game, obviously, but it's also not a take that game. So many of the Viking games fall either into that co-op thing or the take that kind of thing, uh, take that um, kind of game. So. There's a little bit of take that in this game, um, involving some interference cards, um, but other than that, it's really honestly mostly a kind of build your own village, build your own mechanics kind of game, and I really like it. Now let's go ahead and talk about the game a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to talk about um, the art. I want to tell you that one of the most beautiful things about this game is the art. Um, the cards you can see here are really, really pretty. Um, the board is huge. I can't stretch it all out, but I'll give you a a quick shot. It's a really beautiful, well-constructed board. The player mats are a little thin, um, but they're nice. They've got nice artwork on both sides, so they're not that cheap. Um, they're just not heavy, hard, con hard construction keeps it light. Um, we've got tokens for things that are pretty good. I will tell you the only thing when we talked about it after the game that we were kind of disappointed by were these little things. The Viking miniatures. Now, this is not really a miniatures game. To be perfectly honest, the miniatures could have been replaced with wooden tokens, plastic chips, discs, whatever, and I don't think it would have detracted that much from the game. Now, I did think the Viking miniatures, when I saw the Kickstarter ad for it, were kind of a neat idea. Um, disappointing. Um, I would have wanted kind of better if you're going to do miniatures, do better miniatures, knowing that obviously that would have been a lot more expensive, um, or skip the miniatures in favor of something else and gone a little bit cheaper. So that was my, kind of my only downside to the artwork is these little miniatures. And they're really not, the, the Vikings are an important part of the game, but the fact they're kind of cheesy miniatures rather than really good ones um, doesn't make that much of a difference. So other than that, absolutely stunning game. We all agreed at the table when we were playing that it's probably one of the prettiest games. It, it ranks up there with Viticulture. Um, Viticulture also, really, really beautiful, stunning game. Um, same kind of thing. Um, also, Tokaido. Not quite the same style as Tokaido. I think it's much more like Viticulture in terms of its style. Um, but just very beautiful. Um, that's the artwork. So now let's go ahead and talk about um, the mechanics. Um, the mechanics are actually pretty easy to wrap your head around to start with. Um, they're turn-based games and you p have these action cards that you play um, and they let you do things like recruit heroes, build buildings, so on and so forth. Now I will tell you this was the only other downside to this game I really had which was there were, well it's really kind of a combination two-parter. The first one is is that the board is set up in such a way that any of this, most of, I should say, most of the actions that you can take on your turn are laid out somewhere on the board. So if you want to like swap out action cards, there's a place for there. If you want to build a building, there's a place where you do the building builds. If you want to build a long ship, there's a place where you build long ships. And it's very good and explicit about explaining costs and everything. Really well designed that way with the iconography. But there are two hidden actions. Um, there was one where if you're you have a long ship out at sea, you have to bring it in. Um, there, there, there was that action. Um, and then there was another action. There was a constructive building. There was one other action which we noticed that was not there on the board. And when we did our first run through, we had forgotten about that particular action. So we had forgotten that long ships were out at sea until you brought them back in on our first run through. And that obviously changed the character of the game. Um, so the board's great. Um, the rules are relatively easy to understand. I was kind of disappointed that there were actions that were, uh, most of the actions were available on the board. There were a couple of actions that were kind of hidden spots you had to know about. 
Which brings up the second thing is that this game really cries out for a player reference card. It's iconography driven because it's got a lot of different icons on it. Um, and if you don't know what the icons represent and how the actions work, it can get pretty complicated. And I was kind of surprised they didn't have a player reference card either on the board or little player reference cards you could give players. That would really enhance the game would be a little player reference card. Um, because that ultimately that caused us um, one other thing that happened when our first run through with Spakes is we had forgotten about the there's a mechanic where once a person goes on a raid you can interfere with their raid and make them spend more cards in order to make the raid successful um, I missed that uh, mechanic I'd forgotten about it um, and so it, a player card would have really helped that so those are kind of the two downsides um, to the mechanics other than that the mechanics are rock solid um, we played, I mean, it was kind of interesting. One player complained that there weren't enough construction cards in game while I was drawing them left and right, which I found kind of interesting. Um, I think it was just a matter of luck of the draw. Um, there were different people. Ultimately, the first time we played, everybody went raid, 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 as raid as fast as you could to score as many points. Um, the second go around when we played, people started taking different, different strategies towards trying to get victory points. There was a couple, there's one guy who did raids. Really good way to get points, obviously, is kind of what most people think of. There was someone else that focused on building buildings, because buildings get you victory points. Now, that was another thing we missed our first go-around, which was that on the buildings, we had missed the fact that when you build a building, there's an icon on the top, which represents a replacement for an action card. It basically gives you an additional action card in your hand um, once per turn. Um, we had kind of missed that, missed that kind of option. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, again, again, player reference cards would have been really helpful. Other than that, just a beautiful, fun game. It plays, the th we were playing three and four player games in about 35 minutes to an hour. Particularly when we got familiar with it, it went very fast. Um, hand management, beautifully handled. Um, the first go around, because we didn't know about the take that mechanic, people were always spending all their cards, but the minute we remembered that take that mechanic, people would hold a few back just to interfere with other players, which was kind of cool. Um, so ultimately, in the name of Odin, right here, definitely on my buy list. Um, I don't know whether um, the company has um, put it out for sale yet. It, they kickstarted it, and normally after you kickstarted something, it takes a while. Um, if you're going to do it, definitely take the rules, build your own uh, player reference card. I actually put one up here on Board Game Geek, Geek um, because it was such a problem. I should have printed them out when I went and played game. I forgot to. So. On that really, really good game. I really liked it. Um, so just a few minor quibbles about it. Um, I hope the publishers will do it. Honestly, I think they could probably come out with some new action figures, and I'd probably be a little happier with it. Okay, that's it. Go out and buy Game of Odin, or In the Name of Odin. It's a great game.